So again, in Illustrator, we'll just start with uh, basic 3D tools. So I ain't going to worry about size. When we get to making the actual icon, it'll be important that we know what size. The other thing to keep in mind is most icons are square. Okay, so keep that. And the round edge that you see on your phone on the icon is not... You don't need to do that inside of Illustrator or in Illustrator. The round edges that you see is actually done by the operating system. Okay, so you put it square into the program. Let's say you're doing an app of Xcode, and it actually puts the round edges on there for you. So you don't have to calculate the round edge. So we can make a square, a square um, artboard if you want. You know, we got 11 by hey, let's do 11 by 11 inches. How about that? That's nice and square. Uh, again, I'm going to use RGB because it's going to be on a screen, and I'm just going to hit OK. And we got a square one here. Let me reset my tools so that I don't have to deal with it. I'm going to reset to default settings. Again, if you want to set your tools all back to the default setting, it's under Window Workspace. Reset Essentials is like the default setting. And it puts it all back to if you just installed Illustrator for the first time. To do a basic 3D tool, I kind of like doing my, I know you're going to hate it, uh, the wheel again or the gear because it's a nice way of looking at um, looking at a 3D space. So we'll, make, we'll kind of exaggerate it a little bit. Again, I'm going to make my standard uh, gear um, shape by um, putting my cursor in the middle here and drawing a circle. So I'm going to draw a circle. And if you remember how I make my standard gear, uh, this time I'm going to use a round rectangle tool and to do my standard gear remember I, I kinda start in the middle here if I can I hate I, I would just, if only I don't like that I don't like that you know sorry it's evil evil I guess I'll have to start up here so I'm going to make a um, rectangle it's not quite in the center because it won't let me start in the center. And so I'm going to have to center it. It wouldn't let me put it in the center because of the, the way that they, they change the features. Then if you remember from doing the flower, I'm just going to rotate this around again like we always do um, using the rotate tool. And once I rotate, I can do my 45 degree angle and then do my command D. There we go. So just like the flower, you've seen me do the wheel before. Uh, I'm making a standard kind of gear looking shape um, with just rectangles and a circle. And then, of course, we put it all together into one object by using the Pathfinder to unite them all. I go in under Window. Pathfinder and of course we select all of them and we can unite them the first option under Pathfinder to unite them all into one object so we have the standard gear that you've seen me make probably many times and then of course we can fill that in with the color there okay so to use the 3d tool so I love this wonderful um, gear that I made but it's kind of boring and flat if I want I can actually make it three-dimensional by using a 3d tool to use the 3d tools are located under the effects window and you'll notice one of the first options is called 3d right here and again you got extrude and bevel revolve and rotate rotate is not you know that all it does is rotate it doesn't do anything else you'll see it just rotates it doesn't give you any real 3d space if you want something that's kind of on an angle you might want to use the rotate tool so I'm gonna kind of avoid that one the one we use most again it would be the extrude or the 
uh, revolve. To do the extrude effect is underneath effects, 3D, extrude and bevel. And how it works is you get this little um, kind of window that's over here. Then you have angles over here. You have perspective here. Um, you have depth is how, how far it pulls it apart. So extrude is just like um, pulling something, right? So it's like you're pulling the face off of something. If you hit the preview button, you'll see what it does. It gives you a kind of a, a starting point. And you'll see there's like a, a little bit of depth here. I know it's black. It's okay. You can actually change the color of, of this later on. And if you want to rotate it and see it at different angles, you use this box here. And I can rotate it at different angles. You can see the three-dimensional um, space. So in order to do something that's three-dimensional, you can use the extrude. Again, if you want the edge that's here, you can use uh, the bevel option. The bevel is down here where it says bevel. And you can choose a bevel. It will give you sort of an angle on the edges there. Um, it sometimes has problems, though. As you can see, it kind of sticks out a little bit. Um, and there's like a little height for it. I'm not going to use bevel for this. Um, depth is how, how far back it'll go. So you can increase that if you want. And you see how you can pull it way back, or a little bit less, a little bit less. So you can see there is a depth for your extruding. Uh, again, you can rotate it around. If you hit the more options, it'll give you the lighting characteristics. The lighting is. Um, can be revised. Right now it has a default light source kind of in one angle, but you can actually move it around and adjust your lighting on how it would affect your object. In addition, you can actually change the color of the shading. Notice how it's black here. If you wanted a different color, you can actually give your your color a shading color, I guess. That's the light that comes over there. So you can give it a different color if you want. That was under shading. Um, and then there's, of course, ambient light. That's like the overall light of the entire um, scene that you're looking at, and so on. Uh, the perspective option up here is a way of adjusting kind of a camera view. How 3D, a lot of 3D works is by uh, having a virtual camera, which is basically a lens that you're looking through. And since you're looking through a virtual camera, all cameras have some kind of uh, lens to them. And that lens has a kind of perspective to it, depending upon if you're using a 50 millimeter lens or a 30 millimeter lens or a 120 millimeter lens. Those um, kind of adjust the way that the perspective is. So you can adjust a perspective here by adjusting kind of the lens there. And you can see it even just starts to dis dis distort. See how it's distorted now? Um, so the angle is being adjusted by the perspective of this. And you can see the perspective can get kind of crazy. But you know, you got pretty cool shapes like this. Try and drawing that using normal Illustrator tools would be hard, but using the 3D tool um, can give you an object that looks like that. When you're done, you can just hit OK, and let's see what happens. That could be your object right there. Notice, though, it's still the original. So if you want to go back and make adjustments to the 3D object that you've made, you need to do that in the Appearance window, just like we. So it's under Window appearance in the appearance window you'll notice you have 3d extrude and bevel that is where you want to go back and make adjustments it's under appearance and if I click on that it then goes back to normal default setting and you can then hit your preview and start making your adjustments again again it was under appearance is where you can adjust it Now, again, you can't really change the color of the edges here, right? Because they're like, they're part of this 3D object. But you can 
break this all up into individual objects by using which option do you think? Which one? Expand. expand. Yep, that's right. Expand. So if you want to break this thing up into individual objects so that you can adjust the color of things or do something, if you go underneath object, expand appearance, okay, and has a little different option than expand, expand appearance, and it'll convert it into objects. Now you can't, of course, adjust the 3D anymore because you've just turned off the 3D. But what you can do is you can use your white arrow and select a certain facet and change a color. And so if you want, you can then go and adjust things. And so you can see it makes it as individual objects. Kind of cool, huh? Who's ready to make a wine bottle? Do you have good wine over spring break? Hopefully. Okay. We'll make the wine bottle today, right now. You can do it. Take us about 20 minutes, and then we'll look at your art. To make a wine bottle, so I'm going to delete this. Don't worry. To make a wine bottle, we make half a bottle. Of course, I would use my favorite tool, the pen tool. Again, I would draw, just think of what a half a wine bottle looks like. Of course, you have the little top where the cork goes in, right? And then we goes down a little bit. Maybe there's a little, little notch on the top up there. I'm going to go a little notch. And then I'm going to give a little curve for my wine bottle. I can go all the way down here. I'm going to go back over here. And I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. So whatever a half a wine bottle looks like, that looks like half a wine bottle. The most important thing to keep in mind is if you are making a revolve, that the, the surface that you're revolving around, which would be this one right here, uh, is straight. Because if it's not straight, it'll actually put a hole in there. Well, you might want a hole in your object. Maybe you want a hole in your object. I don't know. But because it's going to rotate it around, and so you kind of need a kind of a straight side to make it rotate nice. And of course, orange is not good for a wine bottle. Let's make it purple. Here we go. Wine color. There we go. Whoosh. I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit and make it a little fatter just so we can see it easier. There we go. So a half of a wine bottle. So to make this into 3D, we're going to use the, the 3D option called Revolve. To revolve this, I select it, and it's underneath Effects, 3D, Revolve. And if we hit the preview, you can see what it does. It'll kind of wrap it around and give you three-dimensional space here. Now, if it doesn't kind of turn out right, maybe there's a, an option down here where it says left edge right here or right edge. Which way, which edge? So, so remember the straight side is on my left side, so left edge is working fine. But if yours is not working fine, you can go right edge here and it's doing the opposite where it's rotating around the curved edge now. And that's where the hole is. Remember we talked about a hole maybe? So we can look down and say, oh, there's a hole in there. And maybe, hey, this is a good way to make a tube. But really, I don't want right edge. I want left edge. And then you can see my three-dimensional object. And you can have it in perspective and so on. There we go. We'll tilt it a little bit. Uh, we'll make it to be perfect for our ad. Maybe you're making an ad for a winery. There you go. Okay. <coughs> Again, you can adjust the lighting, how the lighting is on there. If you don't see the lighting options, you might need to say more options, more options, more options. 
So it's kind of simple. Again, you even have the perspective if you want. You can give it all kind of a distorted look if you want. Distorted a little bit with the perspective. Now, of course, it's kind of boring being a, a bottle with nothing on it. So I'm going to make a label and put it on there. In order to make a label to put onto a 3D object, you, it needs to be a symbol. So I'm going to hit OK because I love it the way it is. I'm going to move it over here a little bit so it's over here a little bit. And I'm going to draw my label right here. So I'm just going to, anything can be in a label or uh, anything could be in a symbol. Um, well, not everything. There's, there's some restrictions, but uh, I'm going to make uh, kind of a, a piece of artwork that would be for a label. Uh, let's give it a color. Think of a, you know, you've seen wine labels before. Give it a nice kind of pink color. Um, maybe give myself uh, some 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 leaves or something. Let's let's draw with some leaves. So maybe I will paint. Um, what do leaves look like? Leaves, leaves, grape leaves. It looks more like a, a um, palm tree or <laughs> a grape leaf. Hey, maybe it's palm palm wine. Anybody have palm wine before? They make wine out of palm, or or yeah, I guess the seeds or whatever the palm tree. Um, and uh, maybe we even draw our label here. Let's draw. Maybe we draw. We can see. Put our name in there. Got to be put my name on a label somewhere. And let's put some text in there. the best vino in the world. And then um, put some shapes in there. And maybe a circle up here. A little sunset action going here. Let's put a little sunset going here. Boy, that's a beautiful label. Okay, so uh, in order to put artwork onto a three-dimensional um, space, it needs to be a symbol. So we need to convert this artwork that I just made or this label into a symbol. To do that, of course, we have a pop-up window for a symbol. It's under Window Symbols. And in the Symbols window, I can grab all my artwork and drag it into the symbols window. And it's going to ask me to give it a name for a symbol. I'm going to call this uh, uh, wine label. Now all these features that you see in the symbol making feature actually come from Flash. And I did tell you uh, um, that um, Adobe bought macromedia and they started integrating some of the features from different 
software programs into the Adobe programs. And so all these things, these options that you see here come from Flash. Um, a movie clip or graphic um, is just a way of labeling something inside of Flash. Uh, movie clip's much more dynamic. Uh, you can program it in Flash through programming. Um, dynamic symbol or static symbol, dynamic is something you would program. Down here with the enable nine slice, scaling is a way of um, scaling usually navigational button if you made it inside of Illustrator and you were bringing it over to Flash. Uh, you leave this enabled so that it can scale properly to different size screens. Uh, and then pixel alignment is usually if you are uh, animating something. So if I'm building something in Illustrator and I'm going to animate it, where do you want... Um, I think, no, I don't know if that's right. I'm not sure what that is. The, the registration is it. That's it. The registration is where you would want to animate something. So you could adjust this. Right now it's default to the center. But let's say you were animating something in an animation program. You might want to have it rotate around the bottom or in the corner here. So it rotates around the corner of the object and not from the center. So that's what this registration is important to that. Uh, so when we go to do an animation sample in class, uh, when we go from Illustrator to Flash, make sure you think about that uh, as you're making your objects inside of Illustrator. So if I hit OK, it puts it over here to um, in my thing here. And once it's in there, you don't even need this anymore. You can actually delete that. It's gone. Whoosh. Oh, I lost my symbol. Well, the symbol's never lost. You can always go to your symbols and drag it right back out. Boom, there it is again. Hey, it's back. Delete. Oh, look, it's back. Okay, so again, it's in the symbol option. Next, uh, um, I'm going to wrap it around my 3D object. Again, in order to adjust your 3D object, you can do it inside of the appearance window. So I'm going to go back to the appearance window. Back to the appearance window. In the appearance window, you'll notice I have my 3D revolve. I'm going to click on that. And it takes me there. You can hit the preview again to see what it looks like. Now, when you go to map it's called mapping art in order to take your symbol and map it on your 3d object you actually map it on a facade or a, a face and if you notice when I click and drag this you'll notice you see all these different black lines do you see them as I'm rotating it so these black lines are representing the different faces of the 3d object and right now there's one on the bottom there's one in the middle and there's two or three on the top up here. So you'll notice this is one face here. Right here's another face. Right here's another face. And then this is all one big face, the edge, and then the bottom's a face. So when you map the art around, you map it to a specific face. Of course, we're going to want to choose the middle face, this one right here. So to do that, I'm going to go, again, it's called mapping art. And if you go to where it says map art in this window again, in the 3D Revolve window, if I click on map art, it'll bring up there. And then this is where you scroll through the faces. Right now, again, it's on the bottom. Notice how it's red right here. So, so if I wanted to put a, a, an image or a texture down here, I could click on that. Or if I click the little arrow here, it'll go to another symbol. That's the top one. You can see it's red here and it's round there. Um, this is the edge. Oh, this is the one I want to map it to. See how it's red now? It's showing me this is the face. So once I have the appropriate face to map my art to, I can then go to where it says um, symbol right here at the very top. Up here it says symbol right here. If I click on that, you'll notice there is my symbols. And of course, I have my one called wine label. And if I click on that, it'll put it on there. Now, of course, look, it's on the other side of my object. But you can actually move it around in this window. And you can then have it wrapping around. If it's not showing you appropriately, I have a problem. I think I have my 3D object inside out. Because it's like wrapping around the other side.
Let me cancel this. What do I have under here? I'm assuming it's this option here. Turn cap, turn cap off for hollow appearance. No, I don't want hollow appearance. Turn cap on for solid appearance. That's what I want, solid appearance. I don't know, my object just doesn't seem right. It just seems opposite for some reason. And I shouldn't see this hollowness here. Maybe I rotated it too much. Here it comes. There's my label. I think I rotated it too much. There we go. And of course, you can actually scale it. Again, make sure you have the right surface. And so I can scale it down if it's too big. And I can move it around. And I can scale it down. And that looks a little better. Again, just like uh, we could convert the 3D extruded object to editing objects, you can do it here as well. So again, underneath the object expand appearance, I can convert this into an object that's editable. And of course, the problem with this though is that it's, it's, it's quite a complex object. So there's a lot of little individual objects in there that makes it very difficult for you can see how many different individual objects are in there. See that? Each one of these is a different object. So it's kind of complex. But do you get the idea of how you might use some of these 3D objects? Yes? You you went to the appearance window? Yeah. You, you should see two revolves if you did it twice in there. Okay. Do you see two revolves? Oh, okay. I gotcha. You can delete one of them. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. If you I apply... Just, if you, I went through the menu and, and tried to bring it up again, and it created like 5,000 objects. Yeah. So yeah, if you apply an effect more than once, it'll keep building it up in the appearance window. That way you can go there and, and delete it if it has too many. Thank you. Any questions about the 3D tools? I don't know. You just have to try them. Try mapping if you can. There's a lot of really nice examples if you look at them uh, online of people that have used the 3D tools um, inside of Illustrator. And so, of course, people love doing fruit, but that's not very nice. But you can get you got things like this, you know, with the texture wrapping around. See, if you spend some time making a nice symbol, you know, I kind of slap my wine label on there. But um, you know, there's a lot of tutorials on doing 3D. Now, I didn't do the perspective. Woo, well, I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. That's that's pretty painful. Yeah, it's it's kind of painful, um, but. I've had some students use it effectively. Look at, look at these nice 3D Coke bottles. 
paint. Oh, you got a little, you got a, I don't know if that's a donut. Look at that. Can you imagine how to make a donut? Mmm, donut. You're going to do your. Something like this is very simple to do, right? You just saw that. Again, you're just doing half a half a shape and then revoking it. You can color the facades a little bit differently, I think. Or you can actually do more than one object and put them together, right? You don't have to do everything in one object. You can do different pieces and put it together. That looks like a real real photo, doesn't it? Is that really 3D? Some 3D. I like this one. Oh, look at this one. Now, you don't have to do uh, 3D for this, uh, but I do want you to make an icon. I know I haven't really talked about making icons. I just talked about the 3D tools today, but in the next few classes, I'll go over a little bit more about material design and how to do uh, an icon. I just wanted to show you 3D tools today. You might want to use it. You might don't have to. Donut, mmm, yes. But you can use it as a starting point and then um, go from there. I've seen some really nice stuff. There's, there's not very good stuff here. I've seen some really nice stuff with the 3D tool. Okay, let's get to, uh, uh, anybody have something on the thing they want to show? I did. I can stop recording now.